Are you thinking about making a move to the DC area and Arlington, Virginia is a suburb on your list? But before you move here, you wanna know everything that there is to know about living here before actually living here, and even if it's the right fit for your family? Well, if that's the case, this video is for you. In this video, you'll learn the different ways to commute into DC whether you're coming from Arlington or another nearby suburb and the way that Arlington is structured and laid out in relation to DC because they are essentially intertwined. We'll explore the downtown areas in Arlington, the outdoor living, neighborhoods, and if you know exactly why you're here, timestamps are below. Let's get right into it. So first, some things that you should know. People who move to the DC area love Arlington as an alternative because it offers many of the same things that DC does. It's rich and diverse art culture, the museums, the outdoor living is amazing, and you get more for your money in terms of housing costs, as well as the public schools are rated higher than in DC. You can probably get whatever you need by walking no matter where you live in Arlington. And not to mention the commute time from Arlington to DC is ridiculous. You can literally get to DC in seven minutes if you wanted to, but from the heart of Arlington to the heart of DC, you're looking at about a 12 minute commute by car. And uh, that's without any traffic. With traffic, double that, so 30 minutes. So if you're traveling outside of the Arlington area into DC, places in Fairfax County or even Loudoun County, your commute time could be an hour each way. So those are some things that you wanna consider when you're moving to the DC area. And of course, you pay for those conveniences. So one thing I've gotta say is really important is to get to know the George Washington Parkway. It goes all the way down into Alexandria to Mount Vernon to George Washington's estate. And the George Washington Parkway serves as a gateway into DC because you cannot get into DC without first going through Arlington. No matter where you're coming from in Virginia, you have to go through Arlington in order to get into DC. There are five bridges in Arlington that will get you into DC. Let's go over them one by one to see which bridge would be the best bridge for you depending on where you are commuting from. The first bridge is Chain Bridge. It's a three lane bridge. You probably use Chain Bridge if you're commuting in to Washington DC to get to any of the prestigious neighborhoods like Spring Valley, Box Hill, Palisades, or if you're going to school at American University, uh, working at Sibley Hospital or George Washington Hospital, or commuting up to the upper northwest of DC, like Chevy Chase, Bethesda, uh, Chevy Chase, Maryland as well. But if you're coming from parts of Virginia that are further west outside the Beltway, the Beltway is 495. You'll probably want to take 495, the Beltway, up to River Road to get to these parts. 495 goes all the way around DC and its neighboring suburbs. 495, the Beltway does have expressways that you can use to bypass all the traffic as well, and that could cost up to about $10 a day. Okay, so let's continue on. So the next bridge is gonna be the Francis Scott Key Bridge. It's called that because it's named after Francis Key Scott who wrote the Star Spangled Banner. This bridge is, in my opinion, the most beautiful bridge. It's the oldest bridge. It's a six lane art style bridge. You can't miss it. I'm sure you've seen it in tons of pictures that takes you right into Georgetown. When you're crossing the bridge, you'll come to, when you come to a dead end, you'll hit M Street. Additionally, they added the Whitehurst Freeway onto this bridge, which will bypass all the Georgetown traffic. It runs parallel to M Street and take you right into DC on K Street. If you're going to the Georgetown waterfront, you can take the Whitehurst Freeway and get to the waterfront in like two minutes. All you have to do is go down the freeway. Once you get to the, the light, you make a U-turn, put you right down on K Street. Below M Street, the Washington Harbor is right there. The Georgetown waterfront is a favorite place of mine to go to and hang out with my friends on a boat while taking in the breathtaking views of Washington DC's skyline, also known as the Washington Harbor. And if you do own a boat, not to worry, there are plenty of marinas around. There is, the ones I can think of right now are the James Creek Marina, which is located on the DC side by the Audi Field, the Yards Marina, which is right by the Nat Stadium. Back over on the Virginia side, you have the Columbia Island Marina, which is right by the Pentagon. But I believe like that sliver of area land is still actually DC. And then a little bit further south, you have the Washington Sailing Marina in Alexandria. 
All of the marinas are pretty comparable in price. They're about eleven to twelve dollars per day per foot. So take your pick. So right here, between the Francis Key Scott Bridge and the Theodore Roosevelt Memorial Bridge, you have the Roosevelt Island Park. So this park was a memorial for Theodore Roosevelt, and it's a pretty cool place to go check out if you're visiting or if you live here that people often take for granted. We take everything for granted if you live here. All of the monuments, all of the things that you can go see um, that are all subsidized by the government and it's free. But this particular park is pretty cool because you um, walk across this pedestrian bridge to get there. You park on GW Parkway, walk across the pedestrian bridge, and it's a really cool like forest type of thing. And you'll see lots of exotic birds. And Roosevelt was actually an avid birder, if that's a thing. You could actually get a park ranger to take you on a tour of the island while looking at specific exotic birds. And if you're lucky, maybe you'll be able to catch the bald eagle. So the third bridge is the Theodore Roosevelt Memorial Bridge. This probably is the most common, most used bridge because it connects right to uh, Route 50 as well as Route 66 when you're coming into DC. You would take this bridge if you're going to the city center in DC, anything in like Mount Vernon, Chinatown, uh, to the Capitol Arena, or even if you're going to northwest parts of DC, DuPont, places like that. Okay, so the next bridge, the fourth bridge, is the Arlington Memorial Bridge. This bridge connects the Arlington Memorial Cemetery right into DC. You would take this bridge if you're headed to parts in DC, like if you're going to the Capitol or Department of Energy, the Smithsonian, this bridge would be for you. And the last bridge is the 14th Street Bridge, and this is actually three bridges in one. It's a bike bridge, it's also a train for trains, um, metro, and of course auto. You can take this bridge if you're commuting into DC and going to Southeast, if you're going to Noma, if you're going to 8th Street, if you're going to, you know, Navy Yard is in Southeast, if you're commuting to Eastern Market, Nat Stadium, or if you're going to the beach, because you can get to the beach if you're commuting and you're, going, you're coming from Arlington and you're going to Rehoboth or to one of the beaches, you would take this bridge to connect you to 50 East on the other side to get to the Bay Bridge. It's important that we touch on the DC quadrant. So DC is divided up into four unequal quadrants. DC used to be an equal square when Arlington County and the city of Alexandria were a part of Washington DC. So most of the Washington DC streets are named after the classic alphanumeric system. And if you're on a street named after a state, then you're going diagonal. But this may explain why Arlington, Virginia is home to many national monuments and federal institutions. Hey, and if you have found this information helpful so far, please give it a thumbs up because that will help push it out to more people that are also looking to relocate to the DC area. And if this is your first time to the channel and you wanna know everything that there is to know about living, eating, breathing, the pros and the cons, all the nitty gritty about everything living in the Washington DC area, well hit subscribe. And by the way, my name's Allison. I'm a local realtor and I'm a native of the area and my team and I get calls all the time from people around the world looking to make a move to the DC area. So whether you're making that move in nine days or 90 days, feel free to reach out and you can even schedule a one-on-one -on -one Zoom just like this, my personal favorite. The link is in the description below so that we can get to know you, meet face to face and help you make a smooth move to the DC area. So now you know how to get in and out of Washington DC through Arlington, Virginia, since it's the only way to get into Washington, D.C. if you live in Virginia. But now you may be wondering, uh, what about Arlington? What's there to do in Arlington? How do you get around Arlington? If I wanted to move to Arlington, what does Arlington have to offer my family? That's why you need to watch next week's video, because next week's video, I'll explain how Arlington, Virginia is broken up all the amenities it has to offer families, the activities, the outdoor living. And I'll also go into and take a deep dive of the three downtown major areas in Arlington, Virginia, so that you can get a better understanding of what it looks like to live here and in what area or neighborhood, depending on where you work, what amenities are important to you and your family. And I promise you won't be disappointed. So I'll catch you next week. Thanks again for watching. See you then.